Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, I feel like that I've got four or five projects kind of floating around in the air, so look like a good time to wrap up this Phono Stage video series. And I think I've given this enough time to really listen to this compared to the other one that I built. And the other one's not sitting here today because I actually sold it to a friend of mine last night. But here's a picture of what it looked like. And as you can see, it's an unfinished aluminum and it was built on a few inches shorter chassis. So this is the one I ended up keeping. But let me go through what the differences in the two were as far as their builds and my subjective listening impressions. And again, once again, I went into this listening with a bias, assuming that this second one was going to sound better. And the differences between the two, the first one I built, I bought as a kit with all of the parts. And it came with, you know, China spec resistors, coupling caps, the whole bit. And when I built it, I checked all the resistor values as I was building the preamp and found maybe a half dozen of them that were, you know, pretty far out of spec. But the majority of them were in, you know, were pretty close to what they were supposed to be. There was one carbon comp resistor that I replaced because I don't, just don't like using those. And I did replace the um, mica caps that were part of the RIAA network with some high precision mica caps. And I also used some Mundorf aluminum oil caps for the coupling caps. But I used all these electrolytic capacitors and diodes and everything else that came in the kit. And it sounded really good. And I built it as a single board with the power supply, you know, kind of integrated on in the same board with the preamp. And there was a tiny bit of hum. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to build a second one was to see if I could get rid of the hum by separating the power supply from the preamp board. And the way this board's made, it's perforated, you know, part way down between the power supply and the preamp, where you just kind of bend it like that, it snaps in two, and then you can run wires between the two of them. And that's what we did with this one. As you can see, down on this end, we have the power supply. Put this divider between the two sections and put some uh, MU metal on it that's supposed to help, you know, block any kind of noise. And then the preamp section was down here with the wires connecting the two. And that was the idea. And learned a few things like putting the capacitors on the bottom instead of on the top. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So... The other big difference was in the first position, I decided to try one of these uh, MyFlex caps, which I'd heard good things about them. They're these copper foil caps. This is a 0.1 UF, 250 volt, again, a copper foil cap. And like I said, people say these things sound great. And I know that the first cap in the preamp is probably the one that's going to be the most audible. And so... That's where I wanted to try this little MyFedEx cap. So when I got the two preamps finished, and the good thing was I had two different ones at the same time so I could A, B them back and forth. And I used the same new old stock tubes that I found I liked in the original one. And it was two RCAs and a Motorola. I know that sounds weird, but I tried three RCAs and it sounded better with this Motorola uh, tube in the first spot. And these are all 7025 low noise 12AX7 tubes. I tried some 
Gold Lion 12AX7s, and they just hissed and were too noisy for when you're do, dealing with this much amplification. But everything else was the same, where we had the jacks positioned, all that stuff. The other difference was this one, I brought the indicator light from the board up through the top of the chassis, and I show how to do that in the build video. And if I ever build any more of these, that's definitely how I'm gonna do it. I like that. But this little Hammond transformer and the switch, that's all nice. I like the way the tubes just barely stick up. I've, I've got some of these. I think I showed you these little curtain rod grommets. And I want to try to find some solid brass ones. These are kind of gold colored. And they, don't, they don't really look that great. And these aren't something that I would permanently attach because then you wouldn't be able to change the tubes out without taking the preamp apart. The way it's built right now, there's just enough tubes sticking up to swap the tubes out. So let's get back to the purpose of the video, which is the subjective listening. And like I said, I went in with a bias. Oh, the other thing with the new one is this one I bought a board only and I sourced all the parts from Mauser, which were either from Japan or the US. They're all like Nikicon, you know, electrolytic caps. And, you know, I tried to do reasonably best quality. I mean, I didn't put like Blackgate caps for everything, but I mean, I, you know, spent probably twice as much money on the parts building this one in anticipation that it was gonna improve the sonic quality. So when I started listening to these, first thing I noticed was this one was a lot brighter and it was more, almost shrill on the top end to the point of being distracting. And I thought, it just needs to it just needs to run in because the other one had probably six months of runtime on it. So I let it listen to it for several weeks and it got a little better calm down, but the original one I built still sounded better. Which again, I went in with a bias that this one was gonna sound better. And the truth is the original one sounded better. The only thing this one had going for it was there was a tiny bit, like half of the tiny bit of hum that I was hearing, it was probably cut in half with this one or almost gone. I mean, it was, you had to like stick your ear in the speaker to hear it. Where with the old one, um, you needed to be, you know, maybe six inches away, it, the, the hum went away. And neither one of them from the listening position could you detect any kind of hum, noise, hiss, whatever. So it really wasn't anything that you would even notice or would matter. So I finally decided that it, maybe it's this MyFlex cap is creating this shrillness or brightness that I really didn't like in this amp. So I ordered another Mundorf aluminum oil cap and put it in that first position, which is this cap right here, this little kind of medium-sized guy. And initially, it didn't seem to change a lot, but then after about a week of listening to it, it mellowed out, and now they sound identical. I mean, there's absolutely, I can put one in, put the other one in, they sound exactly the same. So the takeaway from this for me was, if you're gonna build one of these, just buy the kit and use the China parts. There was no audible difference between using like the more expensive, high quality, made in Japan, Nikikon caps, and the China, you know, little gold fake looking ones. I mean, they, they sound exactly alike. Now I will say that I think that the coupling caps are important. And if there's some that you really like, some people love the way orange drops sound. Some people like those little yellow jacket, whatever you call them, the little, you know, the little yellow guys. Um, 
Illinois caps. If you like those, use those. You know, not here to judge you on the caps you like, but they do sound different. And I think it's worth using some good coupling caps. I also think it's worth the those little PF caps that are part of the RIA network. I think it's worth buying like some, you know, very precision from Mauser mica caps for those positions because you don't want that RIA network to be off because that just walks the whole sound of the preamp. But other than that, as long as the resistors measure the right values, just use the stuff that's in the kit. I do have another board ordered or I've ordered another kit so I want to build another one of these because I think people, friends of mine, are going to want these. They sound so good. We went over last night, and a friend of mine's got a, a, a nice system. It's he's got a you know Yamaha Direct Drive turntable, you know, with a nice cartridge. He's got a Yamaha power, you know, integrated power amp with you know a phono stage. It's all nice stuff with some nice clip speakers, and you know he's got a really nice system and. He was talking that it just kind of missing some mid mid range and some low end punch, and it just seemed no you know no matter where he turned the bass and treble, he could never get it balanced where he liked the way it sounded and we plugged in my o g preamp in his system, and it was like an instant transformation of how it sounds and I'm sure that a lot of these power integrated amplifiers. The phono stage isn't a top priority, especially some of the newer manufactured ones that are probably geared more towards, you know, AV use or they're geared more towards, you know, CDs. And, you know, they say, well, we're going to throw a phono stage in it just so it's in there. You know, maybe the integrated amps back in the 70s put more energy into that, but this clearly had a inferior sounding phono stage. And I don't know, this this thing may sound better than any of the solid state ones, but he loved it. It's like, I don't care what it costs, just you know, leave it over here. And so probably gonna charge him fifty bucks more than the parts cost me to build that one. And you know, he's a good friend of mine. But anyway, that's the wrap up of this, I think. I can't think of really anything else to, to mention on this. I think too in the future I'm going to build them as on the shorter chassis with the single board. I don't think that that tiny bit of hum that this one helped alleviate is worth the extra size that this turned out. For me personally, I've got room in my shelf for this to sit. It's not taking up room that otherwise would be used for something else. But I think in a majority of systems, this is going to sit on top of the integrated amp or whatever they're using. And so this extra long one's probably not going to fit right. And so for, you know, for future friends, I'm going to build the little, the shorter ones. So anyway, if you got any other questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can go to my website and hit the contact button and, you know, ask me questions about this. I think I'm going to just wrap this whole thing up here. I mean, I will say these electroharmonic 705 tubes do sound really good. They're very, very, very close to what these new old stock ones are. So that's a very, very subtle, subjective thing that some of it, again, could be up here. But the difference between this and the integrated phono stage is huge. So if you love vinyl, build one of these things, guys. They're not that expensive to build. It's a fun project and it really does transform your system. Hope you like my channel. If you do, please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you soon on the next project that we dive into. Have a great day.